Hello and welcome to the video. Thank you, thank you, all the people who've subscribed in the last um, three or four weeks. I've gone from, I don't know, 20 odd to 70 odd. 72 this morning, I think it was. Probably 75 tonight, I hope. You never know what, it's that one, isn't it? If you like the video, you can always subscribe. Um, so currently, I've got stuff to show you that I've got on Sunday. Um, that's yesterday. I've done a few uh, listings, but not not enough today. Um, I had a very slow start, but I've got nine things to wrap to send out, so it wasn't too bad. Um, so yeah, what I bought on Sunday. I've got most of it written down in my little diary because um, anytime I buy cash things, they go in here. So Sunday, it's all written on Friday because you can get a bigger page on Friday. So I started with uh, a normal local car boot. It's only small. Um, and it had rained overnight and it was slight it drizzle at about six six in the morning. I didn't want to, to just wait until seven and go to the, the, the one in Hull. But I decided to go to the local. So this is the first thing I bought. Um, I went along to a, a, a stall that was definitely, she was definitely, how can I put it, uh, not the usual, she, she wasn't local and she had stuff that was interesting um, and there was dealers around the stall and I thought, oh great. Some of the dealers who have stalls, I mean it was about half past six, and she was um, putting brass things and, and old iron things out on the table. He was picking up an old lamp and having a look at it. And there was a um, one of them storm lamps and um, some train lamps. You know the lamps where it's all painted black, but they've got like a hood out the front with the light on the inside. So I picked one up and I'm like, the second quality one from the guy that one of the dealers was looking at. And I said, oh, how much is this? She says, 55 pounds. I'm like, I could understand if somebody says 50 pounds or 70 pounds. And I thought that's very specific, isn't it? Um, she knows exactly what she wants. And she, she'd already said to somebody, I'm not taking offers. These are all the prices that the prices. Uh, but nah. Anyway, in a bucket full at the bottom, I saw this guy. Um, I said so, and it was covered in mud. Actually, still not very good condition. There's a big scratch right across his front there, um, where somebody's run him over or tread on him. And because he's loose, his legs are a bit loose. He doesn't stand up on his own. Um, this guy's called Buzz Off, Master of the Universe. Um, figure. Anyway, I said to her, how much is she? 50p? He says, yeah, because he's a bit rough. I should get £8 in this condition. Fingers crossed, you know. Um, so then uh, I went along to a stall a little bit further along and um, asked how much the books were. And they said, three for a pound. Uh, 50p each or three for a pound. So I got... Uh, six there and there's just one missing from the set and Call of Duty uh, Advanced Warfare which is um, nice for um, that was on top of the uh, six so you counted them up seven and just took seven, two pound for me for those the Advanced Warfare is about a tenner's worth um, delivered so you know there's maybe a fiver's profit in that and the, the paperbacks they're all Bloomsbury but four paperbacks two hardbacks the last two there um, it's missing uh, the one with the yellow back anyway it's missing that I've got about three or four of them and that was two pounds 
here. I went to a stall a little bit further on and I saw this. Which is really nice. Unfortunately, as I came to the stall, the guy was walking off, off with a, another big box full of scale electric. And I thought, oh, I missed it. And then I saw this one on the counter and, and I said to him, how much is that one? He says, oh, well, there's no cars in it. So I said, oh, right. And I'm like, why is there no cars in it? He says, and there's no electrics in it. Okay, so there's no cars and there's no electrics. What does that leave? He says, there's just track in it. So, okay, how much is it? Two pounds. And I'm like, Okay, I'll have it. He's like, there's nothing else but track in it. I'm like, that's fine, two pounds. Two pounds for the track. It's unfortunately covered in white stuff, and I'll tell you a little story about that later. Um, I'm sorry, but I was like, I just realised it's all sticky on my fingers now. It'll come off with alcohol. I know it'll come off with alcohol, because I'll tell you a little story about it later. Right, so that was um, two pounds. And then I went, do you know what? Bear with me a second. I'll probably cut out that big long bit, that big long pause. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because this stuff is manky. It really is. Um, it's, it's not pain. It's like white pain. It looks like white pain, but it's not. It's like rubberized. And it's been getting everywhere. I don't know how it happened, but um, no, I'll tell you later. I'll get through this bit first and then I'll show you. Right, alcohol on the floor. So I went along to the next stall, or next but one stall actually. And uh, you know how it is when there's like, there's only I don't know, maybe a dozen and a half stalls there, except for the interior, which, as I say to you, uh, I'd got there about half past six, and it was just too early. A lot of people haven't turned up yet. Um, so I saw this stall who's putting out electricals, and he's got all sorts of things like video games and stuff, so it's up right on my street. Um, and I said to him, how much is this? Blu-ray display in its box, Toshiba, and its round, its number is BDX 1500KB. Um, the Toshiba ones, they use this KB all the time for UK, I don't know why. But anyway, um, it's a full HD, not like HD ready or anything. It's got uh, its manual, it's got its, its remote, it's all in the bag. And he's saying, oh, um, I've got a tenner. So I offered him eight, and he's like, yeah, all right. So we've got off to a good start, eight pound for a Toshiba. And as I'm looking at this, um, somebody else was looking at another one a bit further along. But it was coming and hiring. And the guy says to him, he says to him, how much is it? And he says, six pounds. Samsung, with its remote. And it's the internet capable one where you can watch YouTube or um, Netflix, uh, Amazon Prime. Um, it's the BDF5100, which is actually worth more than the, the Toshiba. So I said, how much? No, the other guy said, how much? And he said, six pounds. And the guy put it down. The moment he put it down, I said, I'll have that one as well. So I was on... £14 at that point, but I knew I was going to buy some more stuff off him because I'd seen it on the stall. And the next thing I saw on the stall was these two games, which I've got this one at the moment. This did for about six or seven pounds. And Bridge Racer for PSP. I know this is a popular game. And PSP uh, discs are getting more and more difficult to find in good condition. This is in spotless condition. So those added it up to £16. Um, I bought 
this off him for two pounds. It looks like it's in good nick. Um, a little bit of cracking around one of the, the uh, controllers, but it's solid, you know. That's a PS3 wireless controller for two pounds. That came to 18. And then I saw these lenses. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I said to him, how much are you doing your lenses for? And he started talking them up, like instead of just naming a price. And when people start with that, you know they want more than they think they're worth. And it's like, I said to him, they need refurbishment. None of them have got, well actually, one of them's got two lens caps on, this one. The others haven't, and that means Basically, they've been kicking around in the bottom of these car boot boxes, accumulating dust and grime, and actually every single one's got dust and grime on the inside. Um, and that, that's really difficult to get out of. Basically, even if they're good lenses, it reduces the price because somebody has to take them apart and clean them. Or if they're not valuable lenses, Nobody can be asked because the price, I, am I allowed to say that on YouTube? Nobody can be bothered or financially incentivized to clean them. So I said to him, they'd have to be cheap. Uh, you know, and I made this five pound leash to the business. And he's like, oh, well, you know, and they, they just need taking apart and get a bit of vinegar on lenses and clean them. And I said, no. Nah. Even if it took an hour on each one, for a professional, you're looking at maybe 150 quid. You know? Um, and each one's not worth that much. That made 150 quid for all six is what I meant. But, so I got him to throw the whole lot in. I had 18 going, and I paid 26 for all the lenses, the DVD players, the video games, and that controller. So I was pretty pleased with that. Um, considering I get 26 for the Samsung um, Blu-ray. They weren't DVD, well they're clear DVDs, but they're Blu-ray players. So, I was pleased with that. Um, and that whole lot cost me 26 pounds, and then I left um, my local car boot and I went into Hull and I got some video games at the first couple of stalls just to start me off um, I got let me see oh no, I got them later I got those two for a pound each I actually got this one up for sale on £10 at the moment and this one's about six or seven pounds so not a lot of money in them there but well worth having um, these two came on later and um, I got this SingStar microphones I've just been having a look before the uh, video filming and it's got everything in it except for the little cable that goes from the back of that into the PS3 it's just a um, USB it's a mini USB not micro mini which is the one that they used before they realised that Mini wasn't Mini enough and made a micro version. And it's got its cables and wires and boxes apart from that Mini USB wire, which uh, those are going for boxed in this condition, probably 25. I paid three for that. So I was uh, doing quite well by then. Uh, next, I got some toys. Um, this guy and this guy. This guy's called Chip, somebody or other. And I've yet to test him because he takes batteries in the back. He does have a, a moving arm, which is nice. And if you press the button there, assuming the batteries are all corroded and everything, but I can still take my part and get him working. Um, there's 
a voice that's stuck in now and this lights up from what I can tell. If I can get him working we'd be looking at nearer 40 quid than 30. He cost two. Um, yeah that button's working fine it's just it's a bit sticky. Um, yeah, it's in good nick, paint-wise and hand-wise and everything. So it's just a matter of giving him a good clean, making sure he speaks when you press the button. And then putting him on for, I don't know, say $8.99. I wasn't very pleased. Um, I didn't know the prices at the time, but I knew it was Toy Story, um, Little Little soldiers, small soldiers, is it? Small soldiers. Chip. Chip somebody or other. And this guy's called Insaniac. Um, and she charged me a pound for this guy, which, yeah. He goes for anywhere up to 20 quid. Um, and is in really good condition. Everything about him is undamaged and clean. So that's what you want out of a, a toy, I suppose. Anyway, you can make him position so he'll be balanced as well. And uh, everything moves. There's no electrics in that one. So that's why it's cheaper. Um, toys. And then I got two board games. I'm going to pick these up any time at the price. One pound fifty each. Um, everything's there in them. The lady was absolutely really nice, and she says to me, "What I do is I make sure that everything's there and pack it all up, so all the little pieces are there." So I was like, "All oh, right, that's nice." So I opened it up. And yeah, it, it, it might not be in the right order, but you know, tidy. And then the cards, whoops, tidy. Actually, there's one card in the money there. And then all the pieces in a little bag. It's like half the work done. So yeah, £1.50. This is a bit split. I think a bit of tape can't sort. And frustration. So I open that. There's the, there's the board. There's all the pieces. It's like two minutes work saved there. Um, and Ellen Howell. Next is my little camera. I got this Bell and Howell in its nice leather case which is probably worth more than the camera these days. Um, flap it open like that. It's a Super 8 I think or 8mm Focusmatic which I think it means doesn't focus at all. Uh, from these days that's what it meant. Um, oh no there's a, a little dial so you dial it up to eight foot and that's focused or you can dial it back to 60 foot that's the lens cap there's battery test batteries go in the side from what i can tell it takes uh, oh, that's where the ceiling goes anyway it's basically you can't get the films. Nobody really wants the films anyway. It's, it's a display model. Doesn't matter whether it works or not. So yeah, three pounds up. Um, I'm not really certain what sort of price it's gonna fetch, but not a lot. Uh, Patterson slide box. This thing here. Um, these are actually quite good 
in that you can put the slides in from that side and the slides in from that side and they sort of interweave, which is a bit unusual. You get 50 on each side and then you get a carrying handle. So you can get 100 slides. What I've been doing is a couple of years back, I was buying the wooden slide boxes and I was emptying all the slides out into a bag and selling the boxes empty. But recently there's been a, a big movement about found uh, media, i.e. if you have pictures of, I don't know, cars, trains, automobiles, planes, um, boats, ships, ocean going liners, um, family outings, people on the beach, uh, different fashions from the 60s, 70s, 50s, whatever. So, what I've done in the last few months is filled these up with the old ones that I've dumped out of them, in, them previously and sell them as a filled up item with like random slides in because I'm not going to say the people who own the slide own the copyright to the pictures the, the rights still go with the people if they are obviously in a private setting. But if, say, for instance, you have the, uh, a photo of a street, nobody has the rights to the images of that street, but you've got the only reproducible picture of the actual image. So, yeah. So instead of two or three pounds for a box, you can get 15 pounds for a box. I got 15 pounds for the last one uh, with 200 slides in. This has only got 50 on each side. Okay, actually, I think I've got 17. Um, where without that, the box might have been a fiver. I've got a couple of digital cameras, which I'm always going to be looking at, um, especially the later models. So this one's a... Fuji Finepix L55 with 12 megapixels, no charger, but it does have a battery. And the battery is original, which is important. And a Sony Cybershot T20, and that's... Um, it just says very three times optical zoom. Uh, I'm not sure where it says anything about how many pixels it has on it. Um, no, it doesn't. This one again has an original battery. There we go, lovely. But it doesn't have a memory card, whereas this had a four gig SD card. I got these for, well, they were two pounds each, but I got them both for three pounds off the guy. And um, I'll be able to sell the foggy memory card for more than that, maybe four pounds 50 delivered. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it pays for these completely. Um, and it's literally click, click, turn the thing over, click for the memory card. Um, as long as you can put testing and working, well, all you have to do is put them in the camera and check them. They're very popular with people with Wii's who are um, jailbreaking them. Um, they'll call it jailbreaking and on the Wii they call it um, something else. But basically you can put a lot of games on the hard drive or on a hard drive or on a big uh, memory card you need a small memory card to load the software off the internet and break it into the Wii. Um, I think up to 8 gig. Well, these days people aren't selling 8 gig cards, so there's a market for them, especially the old SDs that aren't XS and XC, really fast cards. These are just bog standard SD cards. 
it's not a huge market. They're only going to go for four or five pounds, but it's worth having them. So you might as well get them. And they come in the older cameras. Not that this is an old camera, it's 12 gig, uh, 12 megapixels. So, you know, it would sell on its own. But I don't have a charger. And I don't have a charger. So, difficult to test. But they've got batteries. And each battery is worth seven or eight quid. So that's 16 pound, 20 pound if you, if you include the card for three pound investment. It's not huge, it all adds up. I've personally, I said at the beginning of the year I was looking for the more expensive items and this is why I've gone for things like lenses and DVD and um, Blu-ray players and things. But, you know, incidentally, as I'm walking past them, I might as well have that. Um, I've got the digital cameras. Then there was the, oh, I've got this. Oh God. Uh, New MIG 8M, P8M. It's a um, projector. And I'll show you it in a sec. Oh, God. That's the one thing about these things. They were well made at the time. So this has got a, like um, metal bands powering it. Not um, elastic. They're elastic inside, but they've got a sort of spring wear metal band in, on the outside. Um, and those, I've tested this. Oh, it's all working. And it uh, has a light that runs and the shutter's going. So, I'm going to sell that as a mostly working example. Um, I don't think people actually use them anymore, they put them on display. But yeah, it's vintage and, oh god, it's heavy. There you go. The coffee getting cold, I don't want to spill it. Hmm. Lovely. We're nearly at the end. I'll probably have to cut some of this out anyway. Um, yeah, so I got the next one was a bundle. There we are. I saw this and this, and I thought, oh, that's, that's interesting. At outside of um, a guy with a, a looting van who was just piling piles and piles of clothes out and it was a real clearance and there was like people dashing in and digging about um, all sorts of stuff and he'd laid out a tarpaulin with all sorts of electrics on uh, and I saw this and it was piled on top of stuff and I thought to myself oh well they're quite handy actually for a wee but what drew my attention to it was it didn't just look like that it had one of them in it controller oh god let me just uh, connect that in just give you the uh, the full effect they fit in nicely like that um and then they have a game with them and you can uh, Oh, what that is for actually? Oh, that's for putting your controller in correctly and connecting it up. There's a button on the back of the controller you can press while this is open. And you can draw. And the game is, well, there's games you can draw on and fill in the colours. And there's like um, artistry with, with the pen that sits on the back. And... They come with a game and there was a box underneath it so i had a look at the box and the box was actually all the stuff that was with it and there wasn't a game with it but there was all oh, this another controller another nunchuck another nunchuck um, 
I would supply for a fit board with a rechargeable battery. Um, this thing, which I'll tell you about in a minute, and one of these. So I just uh, said to him, how much? And he said, a tenner. And I said, like the whole pile, and he, yeah. Okay then, I'll have it. I clean this. As you can see, it's really nice and clean. And the reason I've cleaned this is because at the time, I didn't know this, something had leaked onto the pile that I picked up. This is likely to be uh, modified a little bit because what had happened was some sort of corrosive liquid had got onto the feet of this. There's four little tablets there and there's four little tabs of rubber, white rubber. And unbeknown to me, it had melted them. Well, I just shoved them in a bag. And when I got it out, I tested it. Or at least when I got it home, I put it on the side. Um, and started testing it. And there's these big white marks. What's that? It, it was like, you know that paint that they used to use for anti-vandals? Where it will not set, but it's really sticky. It was just like that. All these had melted, and every time he touched it, it was melted, it was melted white plastic all over this, all over the scale electric, all over my skybox, which I'd sat this on, um, all over the the uh, footstool, um, I've got some on the back of my foot. That it was in everything in the in the uh, in the bag. Oh, I spent well, yeah, it's only about a quarter of an al uh, a liter of rubbing alcohol. That was a new one. Um, getting it all off and scraping the little bits of rubber out of the bottom of these. I'm gonna probably just put some of those felt pads. I'm sure people won't mind. Um, so then I played uh, Wii Roulette with this. As I say, it cost a tenner for that lot with the two controllers and this. And inside it, um, for those who don't know what, about Wii, what, Wii, what Wii Roulette is, it's basically where you buy a number of, of Wii games or a number of Wii consoles and plug them in and see if anything, anybody's left any uh, games in them because people leave games in them. People leave games in all sorts of consoles, but in these, they leave them all the time. They play the same game over and over, especially with things like sports, where there's a choice of games, with play, with sports resort. Um, and their favorite game might be Mario Kart. So it might be in the controller, might be in the console, unless they're playing something else and then they'll put that back in. And what was in this one? Kirby's Epic Yarn. And I've just tested it this afternoon. In fact, the Wii's still plugged in. Um, my one. And that's working fine as well. It's a bit of a, bit of a slow game, but never mind. Um, but yeah, that should go for nine or ten pound, I think. Maybe only eight, I don't know. As a disc only, disc only. Um, yeah, I was pleased with that. <coughs> Gone on with that one too long. That's why I said, you know, that white stuff was everywhere. In fact, I still got some on my jeans. And I bought these two games, 50p each. Um, I was under the impression this might work for that, but of course it's for Xbox 360 version. Doesn't matter. And Skylanders, always popular. Um, what else? Oh yes, my last pickup was, oh, I didn't tell you about what this is. This is a microphone. It's obviously never been used. It's got connections both ends. You plug it in the back of your Wii and there's a microphone sort of adapter thing. And, and, and my last pickup was 25 pound for two consoles. Um, PlayStation 1, it's rattling a little bit, but 
I haven't tested these yet, I'm really, I will test them, but I'm not really concerned. It's got two controllers, one there, one there. It's got an AV cable, but it's the RF version. Nobody uses the RF version anymore. Even on older televisions, the tuning is not reliable enough and you get a really crappy picture. Um, what people do is they use the RCA on the old TVs. I don't think there's any TVs that don't have RCA adapters anymore. I mean, there must be old ones somewhere. Anymore, but nobody uses them. Um, and they're both analog sticks. This one's got no rubber on, but I've got some rubber covers if they work. And if they don't, I'll sell them for parts. So that was part of the job lock. And the other one is this controller. Um, these wires with the AV and this lump, Xbox. This is actually cosmetically loads better. Now it says 20, 29.99 on the bottom. I paid 25 pound for both of them, which I think is fair reasonable price. And um, I could get more than that for just this one. Um, that cash generator requires this. Um, it's been opened. So we'll see whether it's working. It might have been modded. We don't know. Um, if it's been opened, it may have been modded. Um, yeah, I might take it apart and have a look. But this one is a replacement for mine under there. And I'll sell mine if this is working. Because it's cosmetically loads better than mine. Mine's all scratched and cracked across the top here like this. All down here, it's all scraped. And then the tray is a bit hesitant. I'll sell that one for parts. I'll probably get 15 quid as is. Um, but I'll have the back of this open, if it works, I'll have the back open, see if it's been modded. Right, so that's the whole lot. I spent £89.50. Um, I have no idea on the total. Um, but if I can work it out before the video goes live, I'll flash it up here as to what I think my return will be and then maybe what my profit is. As I say, it was 89.50 for this lot. Um, and I'm thinking, yeah, must be onto a winner. Right, I'm going to go and get some tea.